you're looking at a precious treasure, these seeds are tomorrow's forests. But the transformation from seed to mature healthy tree is not a simple one. There's no guarantee that the seed will germinate. That makes the work of these people vital to BC's forest industry. They work at the British Columbia Ministry of Forest Seed Center. Seed Center personnel are more than resource workers. They're renewable resource workers, with the emphasis on renewable. Right now, the forest industry cuts about 150,000 hectares. That's about 370,000 acres every year. Planting of 130 million seedlings covers half that area. The rest is left to regenerate naturally. The BC Ministry of Forests will see replanting increase to 200 million seedlings annually by the year 2000. The work of this seed center is vital to those plans because it's the only seed center in the province. Work really begins after cones have been collected. The cones come from natural stands throughout the province or from managed seed orchards and the seeds shipped here by forest company or ministry field office. Each seed lot, each batch of seeds, is a collection of cones of the same species from the same place, identified by a number. The cones have to be stored and shipped carefully if the seeds are to dry and cure properly. If they don't, it's more difficult to extract the seeds from the cones and process them. More important, seed quality and quantity losses may occur as a result of poor handling during storage and shipping. Cones arrive at the seed center in refrigerated trucks at 5 to 10 degrees Celsius or on specially contained open trucks. As seed lots are received, a sample is removed and sectioned to test the general quality and maturity of seeds and cones. The technician can then determine the conditioning, extraction, and processing schedules. Sacks are stored in cone sheds until cones are ready for processing. True fir species require special treatment. Cones are spread on trays in a cool wind tunnel for three to four months. This is referred to as the pre-conditioning period. Cones are monitored and turned regularly to prevent mold formation. Cones of other species are heated to open them and release the seed. The temperature and length of stay in the kiln depend on the species and quality. The temperature can range from 30 to 60 degrees Celsius, and they can remain in the kiln from 8 to 48 hours. Temperature, humidity, and airflow are carefully controlled and monitored. After drying in the kilns, seeds are easily removed from good quality cones. Quality is recorded by seed lot. Case hardening is a term used to describe a cone's refusal to open, like the one on the left, where scales are only partially flexed or opened. This is caused by mold, insect damage, immaturity, or poor handling. This case hardening causes difficulty in seed extraction. These seeds may also be of poor quality. The dollies are then removed from the kiln and the trays emptied onto a conveyor. The conveyor carries the cones into a revolving screened drum. Seed removed during tumbling is packaged, identified and moved to the initial cleaning phase. The first cleaning removes dust and larger debris which can cause abrasion or mold and mildew formation seed is fed from a hopper onto vibrating screens. The top screen allows seed to fall through but retains debris. The bottom screen serves as a sifter of dust and fine particles. Again, a record of each seed lot is kept. The amount and type of debris, dust and insect larvae is noted. Seeds are cut and tested to determine the percent of healthy seed. With the exception of western red and yellow cedar, and some deciduous types, all seeds are de-winged. There are several methods, but the primary one is rotary de-winging. The gentle rotary action of cement mixers has proved safe and efficient. To de-wing spruce species and lodgepole pine, 
a mist of water is put on the seed so that the wing and seed will separate. For other species, the wing is simply broken off in the cement mixer. When water is added, the seed must be dried again before continuing with the cleaning. Records are kept at this stage to note the ease of de-winging. Generally speaking, the easier it is to de-wing, the better the seed lot. An immature or improperly handled seed lot often requires hand de-winging. Each seed lot is then cleaned to remove the wings and chaff. Subsequent cleanings of bare seed remove debris and some of the empty seed component. The last phase of processing removes virtually all empty seed and debris and results in a product that is 98 to 100 percent pure, potentially viable seed. Its moisture content is at a level safe for freezer storage. After cleaning is complete, the seed is packaged and identified for testing and storage. Before a new seed lot is stored, a seed sample is removed for lab testing to determine moisture content, purity, germination, and seeds per gram. This permits calculation of amounts of seed to be withdrawn for nursery sowing and for other uses. The seed lot is then weighed and stored at minus 17 degrees Celsius in sealed polyethylene bags in waxed cardboard cartons. There are seven individual seed storage units in which some 2,500 seed lots and 40,000 kilograms of seed are stored. Seeds remain in storage until silviculture staff file their requests for sowing or other purposes. Meanwhile, tests are performed. The first test is to determine moisture content. Seed is placed in a convection oven at 100 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. The samples are then removed allowed to cool and weighed. The test notes the amount of water loss during drying as a percentage of the original weight. Further samples determine purity. The weight of pure seed is expressed as a percentage of the total sample weight. Other samples are removed for dry and stratified germination tests. Stratification is an artificial wintering process which helps overcome dormancy and encourages a response to natural growing conditions. Batches of seeds are placed in vials of tap water for 24 hours prior to being placed in refrigeration units. Then each batch is removed from the vial and placed in a germination dish. Dishes are set in the germinator. Photo period and temperatures are set in accordance with International Seed Testing Association rules. The seeds that germinate are counted. From that information, the germination rate can be determined. Retests are performed as required, or every two years. Each year, more than 2,000 kilograms of seed, representing 120 million or more seedlings, is withdrawn from storage. Requests are made by Ministry of Forests or company field foresters and are received in computer printout. Seeds are withdrawn from storage, water soaked, surface dried, chilled, and sent to forest nurseries where the seeds are sown in containers to produce seedlings. These seedlings are then planted in logged areas. The availability of seed and potential seedlings is recorded in a tree seed register and inventory. The seed center also develops methods to improve seed quality. It distributes testing and processing reports to seed collection agencies with recommendations on obtaining quality seed. The Ministry of Forest Seed Center plays a key role in the management of BC's forest resource, providing a dependable supply of high-quality seeds for the province's forest nurseries. This is the job of the Ministry of Forest Seed Center, our trust to ensure that British Columbia forest nurseries will continue to flourish through these and future generations. <laughs>